This is the plaintiff, Catherine Lamusio. She says she hired the defendant to open her pool for the summer, and the guy and his workers were like the three stooges because they didn't know what they were doing. She lost valuable summer swim time because he couldn't get her water clear. She wants the $1,000 she wasted on him back and is suing for just that here today. This is the defendant, Joe Valentini. He says the plaintiff has a 40 or 50 year old kidney shaped pool. And when he got there, it was covered with leaves. He was working on getting the water clear on her pool, but the plaintiff lost patience because she got a late start on opening it and she fired him. He's been working on her neighbor's pool and the rest of the neighborhood pools for 10 years without one complaint, stands by his work and deserves to be paid. He's accused of pooling around. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff hired the defendant to open her pool and says that he and his guys were like the three the stooges. Judge, the defendant says her 50-year-old pool was covered with leaves and she lost patience. To to it's the case of Larry Moe, now pay me the dough. Morning, Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Catherine Lomosio, you are suing Joe Valentini and his business, Bella Pools and Backyards. $4,000 that you paid them because according to you, you got nothing for that. Tell me what was going on That's here. That's correct, Judge. This past so spring, I was attempting to open my pool for the summer season. Um, my usual pool man, his name is Dan, who every year opens and closes my pool, wasn't available due to the fact that he had hip surgery that winter. So I had started investigating different pool companies to find someone who could open the pool. Um, I called about a half a dozen pool companies and I found out the going rate was between $300 and $350 to open the pool. Well, what had you paid in prior years? I paid Dan 250 So you uh, just dollars. had a real good deal with Dan? Yes, and okay. he w mentioned uh, to my father that he was going to have to probably raise the price, which was fine, that okay. was uh, understood. So one day I'm looking out my window and I see in my neighbor's yard, my neighbor has the almost exact same pool that I have. And I see that she has someone working on her pool. I see there's a van in her driveway. I follow the van and I um, approach the van window. And you follow uh, the van? Well, just a few blocks. I oh, saw it leaving okay. and I just So you get in your car, you it. actually follow yes, the van? Yes, yes, right. I did. And while I was talking to him, I saw that he was wearing a navy blue button down shirt with the words Bella Pools embroidered on his chest. And I said, oh, you're from Bella Pools. I know Bella Pools. You have a store on uh, Utopia Parkway. I've been there before to buy. Okay, you're giving me way too okay. much detail. <laughs> so uh, who did you negotiate with, Peter Valentini Peter. or that fellow? Peter. Okay, so what did Peter say he would do? He came to my house. He looked at it. He said, I'll charge you $2,400 to open the pool. What were you quoting, $2,400? $2,400 was she, her pool had to be a complete pump out. It had to be an acid wash. Okay. The pool, okay? So not just to open it. What do you charge to open it? A, n a normal pool, three to $400. Okay. So she didn't want a complete acid wash. She just wanted no. you to open her pool. So why didn't you just tell her 400 bucks and open her pool? Because I couldn't do it before. I took her over to the pool. We looked in the pool. The pool was completely filled with debris. I mean filled with debris. Okay, so what? Okay. So, I mean, I mean you, you can't imagine. We took out eight bags of leaves the first, the first time that we were scooping them out. Couldn't get the vacuum to work the second time. It, 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 it jams up. And as you do that, the water, you can't see the water. You have to keep coming back and keep doing it. Okay, so, so at some point she says, well, I'm not going to pay that. Then what's the next thing you say? I said, if you want it, we could do it this way. I, I could work a little harder. I could try to take out all the debris in the bottom, but it's going to take a, a long period of time. To, to clear up the water. So now okay. what did you propose for $1,200? The $1,200, we, we were going to take out all the debris in, in the pool, try to circulate the water, run it through the filter system, which the filter system did not work. Her, nothing, uh, her whole system was dismantled. No, nothing worked, the piping. We had to change all, all the piping, which she's not telling you when she took us there. It was duct tape on all, all her equipment. We, we hooked it up temporarily with hoses just to, to start circulating water. Okay, okay, so we ran that for two or three days. And we, we backwashed the, the pool about four times. Now, what does backwash mean? You, you, you're running through the sand filter, you take out all the green stuff. In it. We, had, we ran a hose 150 feet to the street. Okay, we kept doing that and kept doing that. 
And then, then I, I, I asked the plaintiff, I think you're going to need a sand change. Where you were going to charge her another $600. Yes, yes, exactly. Because that, that sand filter was how old? I'd say 30 years old. Now, without a filter system, anybody knows you're not going to clear up a pool. Okay. So okay. according to you, her filter system failed, right? Yes. And you repiped stuff. Exactly yes. what did you repipe? Uh, where she has the motor... She had, it was all duct tape put on. She had old galvanized valves on it, which you couldn't even turn. Well, she brought me there and she saw it and she says, yeah, do it. I charge you 550 for it. Is that separate from the separate 1200? From the 1200, yes. And she yes. paid you that? Well, okay, she, paid, so th she made payments as we were going along. How much in total did she pay you? $1,000? $1,000, yes. So you were going to come back and she called the company and said, I'm not interested. I don't want you guys to come back, right? No, listen, yes. I, I, I never stopped the job. I was going to continue the job no matter what it cost to, to, to finish her job. She's the one that called up. When she called up, she got me on the phone and she said, she, she called me some. She said, I called your office. They already charged $300 to open the pool. I have 50 pools that we do. When, when I take the cover off the pool, you can swim in them the next day. I can't tell you how much debris was, was in this pool. The person she Do should, you have pictures of that? I don't have that. I just have the cover with, with the picture of the cover with the debris on it, and I have my guys that could tell you how many bags of debris oh, we yeah. took out. You who are you guys? Them. Who do you want to call right. as a witness? I like Stand to call up. up first. Were you one of the people who was who was cleaning up there? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and how did you clean it up? Uh, well, we have a motorized vacuum that runs off a battery, and I'd say the bag is about, holds about four gallons, five gallons. All right, so basically. what happened in there? So about 20 bags of Leaves, debris, branches, dead animals, all kinds of things on the bottom of the pool. It looked like a, a swim. But she had a cover on the pool. What do you think that she... Well, the cover wasn't in that good of a shape. And whoever put but the cover... But it wasn't porous, was it? There was about a six-inch gap from the ground with the cover. So there was about six inches you can get underneath there. If you see this right here, this picture... These are pictures of before you you right folks started the job? Yeah, yes. we took the uh, Would you put your hand down and please wait? There's a custom ladder. It's two pieces of concrete or brick. In between there is spaces where there's water, anything can get in there. How long did it take you to do what you just said? A couple of days. A couple of days all day? Well, we'd spend two or three hours there and then leave. We'd have other clients right. to go to. Okay. So you did that. You repiped. And you told her you're going to have to get new sand and it's going to be another 600. And she said, I'm done with you. And no. then what did you do? Well, I'd like to go back. So he goes, well, all, now all the returns aren't working. I really have to blow out the pipes. That's another $200. And I thought, I don't want you blowing out any pipes. You know, I, it's not going that well to begin with. I don't want you to do anything extra. Then he says, well, maybe it's not clearing up and the water's not getting clear because you have sand. You need new sand. Now, that's a very big job, a $600 job. And I spoke to other people. All you have to do in that situation is get a $20 bottle of clarifier, they call it. This chemical takes uh, I'm not going to listen to you okay. tell me professionally what needs to be done to clear the pool. It would, I it am would... going to listen to you tell me I paid them $1,000 and the pool still wasn't clear. That is do correct. you have pictures of I how do. the pool looked after the last time they left? Yes. May I see those pictures? Okay, this is kind of how it, when they left, and I actually have pictures of how it should look, a photo. I know how a pool should look. Okay. Just give me pictures of how they left. It should be that's... clear. You should see the bottom. Yeah, you should really? see the steps. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I found out that there are many things he didn't do. Um, he didn't attach the chlorinator. A very... Wait, wait. He didn't attach a chlorinator? That's correct. Why the... didn't you attach a chlorinator? We didn't finish the job. She stopped oh. us from working. That's what I'm trying wait, to wait, say. Wait, wait, no, but she didn't stop you while you were there. You left without it. attaching the chlorinator? After seven days. Stop. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine what it was like for the two of you to talk to each other when you were angry. Because neither one of you can take a breath. Listen to my question. Yes. When you leave that first day and it's murky, attaching the chlorinator should be one of the first things you do, no. right? No, you're right. Why not? No, you're right. We had liquid chlorine in the pool. We were going to hook the chlorine up when we were coming back Monday. Why didn't you do it first thing is what I am asking you, because that's what makes sense. I didn't think it, it didn't really call to hook up the chlorinator right away. Why yeah, not? Because she didn't, she didn't, she didn't, the pool was filthy. We were still working on the pool. I, don't, I, I didn't see a need to hook it up right then. All right, let me ask you a question. Oh, After you said, I don't want you guys to do anything else, you ended she ne up. She never said that Excuse to me. me, sir. You ended up calling your regular pool whose guy. Whose hip was flourishing. Well. And what happened? The pool guy said, the chlorinator's not installed, 
And not only is it not installed, but the pipes he put in did not have any provision to install the chlorinator. That's not, that's why he didn't install it. Do you have it. anything from your regular pool guy saying what you just said? No, I don't. Why not? Well. That's your evidence. Why don't you have that? He lives in Suffolk County. I'm not What gonna... does that have to do with getting at a minimum an affidavit from him that says, <laughs> here's, you know, what happened and here's what I charged you and here's how we fixed it? I testified that the chlorinator was not hooked up. He didn't have the piping to hook up the chlorinator. In fact, he You're told You're only me, testifying to that because someone told you that. That's what we call Well, hearsay. no, I saw with my own eyes. There's no chlorinator. How can the pool possibly clear up if there's no chlorinator? Did you pay the other guy? Yes, not yet, but he will bill me and I will pay him. And what's he charging you? 250 to open and close the pool. Well, they did the hard work, though. They got all the leaves No, out. they didn't. The pool was filthy. No, the pool was unclear. It wasn't filthy. Well, there this was is the pool. You've shown me the picture, how yes. they left it. Right. There's no leaves in it. I mean, there they are did leaves do on somewhere. the bottom. You can't see them so in the So what picture. happened, though, with the piping? If he's only charging you 250 then why are you saying the piping doesn't allow the chlorinator to turn on? Dan, the, my regular pool guy, drilled holes in the pipe and connected the chlorinator and he's not charging you for that. No, he is. He's going to charge well, then me. Where is the proof of what he's charging you? You just said he was charging you the same thing he always charges you. And you're telling me about extra work he, he had hasn't to do. sent me a bill yet. Well, then I guess you shouldn't have come to court quite so precipitously. Well, because he, that's your proof in your lawsuit. He hasn't. I'm going to take a recess and give you a chance to get the I, evidence you need to get. Because right now you're about to lose, even though I think you're right. See, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a recess and you are going to get to a phone and you're going to try to get the evidence that you should be in here with from the new guy who says the stuff you are saying. Court is in recess. All rise. So when you prepare for court, what kind of evidence do you want to bring? You want to bring photos. Well, photos of the pool in this case would have been excellent, right? What else do you bring? Any kind of hard evidence you have that shows that. Like what? Uh, paperwork, estimates, anything that was estimates of what it's going to cost to get it fixed right? Any kind of written documentation, anything that says that they agreed to do something, anything in writing. This is all the stuff you need to bring to court to win a case. Uh, we're going inside the courtroom. So, typically speaking, when a plaintiff does not present evidence, the judge just rules. In an abundance of caution to give you an opportunity well, to get what you need to get, I took a recess. I was informed that you said that you can't reach a guy, don't know his name, and... No, no, I don't have his phone number with me right now. Okay. And he's difficult to reach. I would never reach him on the first try. It usually takes me four or five tries right. to then, reach him. Th then consider this a very valuable lesson, that the timing of a lawsuit is very important. You are the plaintiff. You're in complete control of the timing. He has no control. He gets served with notice of process. He gets dragged into court. You decide you're going to sue him and persuade a judge that all the work he did was unnecessary and you should get returned, not a portion of what you paid him, all of what you paid him, despite the fact that I'm hearing testimony about how they took out bags and bags of leaves and everything else. And even though it got repiped, you want all, every penny of that money returned. And your only basis for saying that is that your old guy came back, looked at it, and said, oh, here's the problem, except you have brought me nothing to prove that other than your flapping gums, which is considered hearsay. I no, will I take, in personally. small claims, a little bit of hearsay on this issue, a little bit, because you guys aren't lawyers, you don't realize everybody you have to bring in, but you're wanting me to pin an entire case on hearsay. You're just, just trust me, judge, that's what some guy said. And then when I give you a chance to actually do something about it, you're like, I'm never going to get him. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'm going to rule. But based on your complete and total lack of any evidence from any other professional saying that he cheated you out of a thousand, because see, I didn't agree to pay 1200. You did. So there's 200 that is already in your pocket because you didn't pay them because you didn't let them finish. Right, so okay. I am going to order you to return $100 of the $1,000, and that's it. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. So in effect, the plaintiff prevails. You've, <laughs> Mr. Valentini, you've got to give $100 back to well, her. Well, this is what she does for a living. That's, that's what I want to tell you. I was one even not to go to, to go to her place. I really tried to help the lady. I didn't quit the job. I would have finished it. We, would, we did everything possible we could, but we bent over backwards for her. Yeah. That's the thanks we get. That's all I can tell you. Well, you live and you learn. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, 100 bucks back. Thank you. You're lucky, I guess. Ms. Lomasillo, 
You were suing for $1,000, you're only going to get $100 That's back. That's correct. You okay? I'm not happy about the verdict. I think the judge should have allowed and taken into consideration oh, my eyewitness testimony. I observed these things. That's not hearsay. At least the, you heard the judge. I did. She gave you ample time. So thank you very much. Okay. All right. You must sign some documents. <laughs> Harvey? I got to say, Doug, she should have waited to sue. Um, you know, damages cannot be speculative. That's the case here. Um, she just lost out.